All right, so here are my thoughts on The Daydreamer. So this is another uh, Rankin-Bass movie. Um, and it's uh, basically the story of a young uh, Hans Christian Andersen, or Chris, as he's named in this movie. Um, and it basically tells the story of like how he... Uh, gets the inspiration for all his, uh, you know, stories, and, uh, basically the, ex the explanation is pretty much the same as, uh, that opening segment from the Snow Queen, basically he, uh, the Sandman gives him the, uh, gives him the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that was, like, a... Well, I know he did a story about the Sandman, so maybe that's why everyone keeps uh, putting in this little uh, element into all the movies. But, you know, I do kind of like how they handle the concept here. I like how... Uh, I do like the concept of Hans Christian Andersen, or just anyone at all, getting uh, inspiration for their work through, like, dreams uh, created by the Sandman, blah, blah, blah. Um, I have, I kind of have mixed feelings about this one. It had, like, charming elements. Um, you know, at times I kind of liked the acting, at other times not so much. Like, um, <clears throat> the main actor, I think he did have uh, a couple of, uh, pretty charming act acting moments. Um... Other times he was dull as a block of wood. Um, let me see. This movie has like a an all star cast. Some of them are like live actors because this is like a part live action, part animated movie. Um, but obviously the animation is like the famous, uh, you know, their famous uh, stop motion stuff. Of course, we know that uh, Rankin Bass also did 2D animation, but yeah. Um, but yeah, um, uh, so let's see, we got uh, Jack Guilford as Papa Anderson, his uh, the main character's dad. Um, he's another one, like, at times he was uh, charming, at other times he was a little too over-the-top goofy and... Uh, his acting seemed very hokey. I think it's mainly during, like, the over-the-top cartoonish moments. Like, they have moments where they, like, have to speed up the clip, possibly to add in a little slapstick and to kind of speed up the story, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, yeah, during those cartoony moments, uh, his acting did get pretty hokey. Um... <coughs> Let's see, what other big stars are in this? Um, Margaret Hamilton, a.k.a. the Wicked Witch of the West. She's in this movie. She's a... Yeah, you only see her live actor, but yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, I think she's like um, the dad's boss or something. She just comes in to collect money or something. I forget what the what she does, but, uh, at times it does kind of feel like, uh, the beginning of Wizard of Oz, where, you know, she's, uh, you know, she, uh, comes to Dorothy's house to, uh, complain about the dog. I don't know, there's some elements of that. Um, and speaking of Wizard of Oz, um, what's his name? Ray Bolger. He's also in this movie. He was the Scarecrow. Um, he seems to be uh, one of those uh, physical comedian types because, you know, he did quite a bit of that as the Scarecrow, and he's he does a little more of that as the Pie Man as he basically uh, balances a bunch of pies. Um, yeah, some slapstick with him. Um... And he's one of those uh, live actors who also briefly appears in animated form during one of the segments. 
he just kind of shows up for no reason. He's he's basically the character that just keeps showing up out of nowhere, you know? Like he has nothing to he has nothing to do with the story, but yeah. Like he's one of the biggest stars in the movie, but he has like very little um he has a little screen time and yeah, barely much of a role. Um let's see. Um well, anyway, like the Sandman like puts the main character to sleep and he uh yeah, he dreams up all these stories he's famous for. Oh, and all the while he's trying to find this uh island of paradise or something. It's space like at the end, you see it, and it's basically the Garden of Eden. Like, yeah, right down to the tree that you're not allowed to touch or eat anything off of. Um, he does, spoiler alert, and yeah, he, uh, and yeah, it's pretty much the same thing you see all the time with the Adam and Eve story. Um, <coughs> but yeah, that's at the end. Along the way, he meets uh, the Little Mermaid. Um, he meets, uh, well, yeah, he meets Thumbelina, and, you know, he also gets involved in the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. Um, so, yeah, um, um, yeah, the, the Little Mermaid, she doesn't have any other name, just the Little Mermaid, not Ariel or anything like that. Um, but yeah, she, he's the one who she falls in love with, and uh, yeah, we um, we get a sad song from her after he leaves her, and you know, uh, while we don't see the very details of what happens next, it is implied that uh, it's the same dark ending from the original Little Mermaid story. Um, Um, <clears throat> let me see, next he ends up in the Emperor's New Clothes segment, um, um, yeah, I'm getting a little unfocused with this review, because the movie is kind of unfocused, um, but yeah, the... Let's see, the Emperor's played by Edwin, a.k.a. the Mad Hatter, and uh, that uh, laughing uncle from Mary Poppins. You know him. You know his voice. <laughs> I can't quite do his voice very well, but oh well. Um, and let me see, the two tailors that make the, uh, quote, clothes for him. Um... Yeah, uh, I know one of them was the voice of uh, Sir Hiss from that animated Robin Hood movie that I will get to at some point. Um, <coughs> also, you see uh, the Emperor naked. Yeah, they uh, they have a nude scene in this, and yeah, you see his butt and everything. He looks like a one of those uh, naked plastic dolls kind of a silly thing to have uh, in a Rankin-Bass movie. I don't know, Rankin-Bass... I say Rankin-Bass took bigger risks in the, si in the 60s, it seems. Um, I don't know, their stuff in the 70s was a lot safer. Um, let's see. Also, I forgot to mention uh, Burl Ives is uh, Father Neptune. If you, uh, for those of you who don't know, he was uh, that snowman narrator from uh, Rudolph. So yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of notable voices. A lot of notable actors, but I think a lot of them kind of lack the charisma that they usually have in other movies. Um, you know, in the Thumbelina segment, um, 
let me see. Thumbelina's voiced by Patty Duke. I don't know much about Patty Duke, but I know she had a show called The Patty Duke Show, and uh, coincidentally, or maybe not, uh, the guy who plays Chris, the main character, he he was also on that show, apparently. Um, so yeah, we got two actors from The Patty Duke Show, and then two actors from Wizard of Oz. Um, let's see. I guess those are all the actors I... Oh, of course. How could I forget? Boris Karloff is a rat. He's uh, one of the villains of the uh, Thumbelina segment. The other is a mole voiced by... Uh, let's see. Sasue Hayakawa. I can't... I'm not sure if I can pronounce it, but... Yeah. The, um, he was a famous Japanese a actor during the early days of cinema. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, he and the Karloff rat are the two villains of the Thumbelina segment. Um, the problem is we don't really get much of a satisfying resolution for the Thumbelina or Little Mermaid. Well, Little Mermaid, it's kind of like a sad ending, but yeah, he just kind of leaves Thumbelina behind and we don't see her again and we don't see much of a resolution and... Yeah, I think that's my main problem with this movie, is that it's just not focused very well. Uh, we do get kind of an interesting character moment where uh, the main character has to, you know, he he realizes he kind of left the others behind. and But then again, he doesn't really uh, develop much from there. I don't know. It's... You know, this, I think this is another one that could do well with a proper mashup review. In fact, there's quite a bit to make fun of, actually. I think I do have quite a bit of material. And the biggest material of all is, uh, let's see, <clears throat> his name is uh, Big Klaus the Game Warden. Oh my god, that guy. So he's uh, a live actor. The guy playing him does not have a Wikipedia page, so apparently this is like the only, or at least one of the only roles he's known for, and uh, I can see why. He's <laughs> so... <laughs> the actor's just so ridiculous. <laughs> like, <laughs> if I do a proper Masher review of this movie... I am going to make sure that I get as much mileage out of this character as I can out of the actor. Because, my god, is he... is his acting hokey as hell. Um... But yeah. For another time. Um... I don't know. This, this movie had some charming moments. Um... But yeah, it's it's got some issues. I I don't think it's perfect by any means. Um, yeah, I'm pretty mixed on it. If I were to give it a rating, I'd probably give it a five or a six. I might lean towards five, but I don't know. There's some enjoyable aspects, so maybe six. Uh, it's not a movie I would personally recommend, but it's not horrible or anything. It's not bad. Um, but yeah, it's... Yeah. It's kind of a mixed bag, in my opinion. Um, so, is there anything else to add? I mean... Eh. Well, as usual... Uh, comment section and stuff, you know, talk about it in every video because, you know, I'm never entirely sure that uh, I've said everything that needs to be said, but, you know, uh, even putting that aside, I am strongly considering doing a mashup review of this one. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll leave it at that. Mash it and smash it signing off.